We've got something exciting for you right now. We have an interview lined up with Ender himself. Ender is not only here right now, but he's going to be without, with us throughout this entire weekend, breaking down some of the matchups that you've seen, some of the drafts that these teams put together. I'm so excited to have him. Ender, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to hear from you. We just talked about some teams to watch. What are some teams that you have your eyes on that maybe people don't know about? Hades is a really interesting team. They had a slow start to the season, but they've got Celestial on their team who actually won not only AO's Cup last year, but NAIC last year as well. He's my former teammate. Uh, Hades was able to take down Luminosity in last month's qualifiers as well in one of their best of three games. And I think they've got some interesting pieces. They like to work around with some different Pokemon. And they're right up there in that CP race. They might not be contending for that world's uh, win-in spot, but I think for NAIC and this group stage, they're looking pretty good. Ender, let me ask you, let's get a little bit more granular. That was a, uh, a team to watch, of course. But let's dig a little deeper. Uh, a player or two to watch uh, in, this, uh, in this event for this weekend. I mentioned Celestial, that's definitely a player to watch. Everyone knows the household names like Lutano and Overlord out there, Zugrug's been a great one. One I want to keep my eye out on is Soup Chef and the rest of Ignorance. They've been in that bubble spot really close to making it to a lot of events. Soup Chef actually subbed in for Brave Birders last year that made it all the way to NAIC as well. They've got a couple interesting techs. You might see a couple potions out there on that team as well. So I'm really excited to see what they have to bring. Oh, I'm excited for the spice. I, I know you are too, Ender. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I actually got to ask you, uh, for the metagame that we are looking forward to, we're going to be watching North America all day long. Uh, is there anything really unique about the North American region compared to the rest of the world when it comes to competition? Any Pokemon picks we're really going to see? Any early game rotations that are going to be really popular? What does North America bring to the table in terms of competitive Unite? I got the chance to watch some OCE games last night, and I noticed a big difference between their meta and our meta in the West here is the North American teams love Tree, Trevenant. Yeah. I don't know if it's that Joey factor who's been able to dominate it in the defender role this entire season, but whether you take it in the top path or in that traditional defender role, I expect to see a lot of Trevenant making it out of these drafts and keep an eye out for those really crafty Woodhammer combinations. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I, I think I think it might be an OC thing because I was watching Japan. They had a bunch of Trevenant as well. Uh, but <laughs> you know, we love OC here. Uh, but okay, my question is, of course, I was I've already talked about them twice. So I'm going to be talking about them a lot. But Nihau, you know, they're the team that made it out in top seed of their group, and they're a team that I personally do not know much about. And I think a lot of people haven't had a chance to watch them. Do you have any like inside information on them, or just kind of a general sense of them, or are they more unknown to you as well? Uh, they've been around the block when it comes to North America. Maybe they haven't had much of the spotlight, but not too long ago, earlier this year, they also knocked down Nemesis, or part of their team knocked down Nemesis to a lower bracket in one of the monthly qualifiers. They used Dragonite during their run there. That's a Pokemon that's been hovering that Eastern meta for a while, OCE as well, funny enough. So we'll see if they bring Dragonite back, and it's a really scary Pokemon for sure. Awesome, Ender. Well, like I said before, this is not the last interview we will have. We will be talking to you throughout this weekend. Thank you very much for being here, dude, and we'll see you very soon. Say goodbye to Ender, everybody, but don't say goodbye forever. What do you do when someone doesn't fully leave? See you later. You say see you later to Ender. Yeah, and uh, we actually have a chance to talk once again to Inder with our second interview of the day uh, to potentially ask some questions about how that match went. How are you feeling about the match so far, Inder? Feeling great, Chef. I thought it was really interesting how both the teams used their bands around that hyper carry meta where Hades is like, we're going to get rid of the slow bro. And, you know, Orange Juicers, they see that we're going to get rid of the Comfy. So that opens up these lines for Lucario to be picked, a Pokemon we don't see too much in the meta anymore. But when I see Lucario, when pro players see Lucario, they think flip. So game number one, Zagreg had really aggressive positioning, never let Hades really into that pit to get that flip started. Game number two was a little bit harder, right? Hades had the point lead going into Rayquaza. Zagreg unfortunately went down early. And when the fight gets really messy, that's when Pokemon like Lucario and uh, Razorleaf Leafeon, like you guys mentioned, really start to thrive. So in the back of my mind, if I'm Orange Juicers right now, I'm thinking, all right, we won game one. We won a decent amount of game two. The fight was looking all right. We got flipped on. They got to regroup. I don't think they're going to ban out the Nilcario necessarily, but the flip is going to be in the back of their mind for sure. 
Makes sense. Well, thank you so much for your insight, Ender. Uh, I always value it. Really excited to hear it throughout this entire weekend because you'll be joining us. But we do have the game ready, so we're going to say goodbye to you for now and jump into game three, Wonder Chef, between Orange Juicers and Hades. Zugrug will be spawning in with six seconds left until the final stretch. So they will make it in time. Reggie Lucky lands uncontested. Hades have one priority, and you can see it right now. Ray Carissa getting absolutely shredded. All the United was right uncontested. No one's blocking the snipe shot. Flareons is clear on the top side, and they get an easy secure. Orange Juicers at least have the Rayquaza, but they are still behind within their points. Roland charging towards the defenseless goal zone of the Reggie Lucky because they have not a single shield. Hundo Burger from the Eldegoss potential. The Reggie Lucky ends. They're not going to be able to score. But I don't think it matters. Four Pokemon already down from Hades, and Orange Juicers have a few Ray Shields left as they are going to be cascading Aos Energy into these enemy goal zones. It's not a day victory. Yeah, this is one of the matches I'm most excited to see the highlights of that final fight because all I could focus on was that there was no one yep. in front of the Inteleon. We have another interview for you. So, Ender, please, we got to have your input on this last matchup. Ender, you have teamed with so many of the players <laughs> on these rosters at this point in time. We saw some pretty cool stuff. What do you think was the key to Luminosity's victory in that first game? You mentioned it earlier, Zoinks, that Overlord's able to go back to his roots and go back to dominating that top path. Mm -hmm. What I really like to see from Overlord is that he's not going back necessarily to his traditional picks. Like, it's not that E-Speed Lucario. Yeah. He wasn't even on that Zork. He's putting a lot of trust in his teammates to give Otter and Lutano both the late game Pokemon and Mimikyu and Gardevoir, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a little bit uncharacteristic of Overlord. Fantastic player, but for him to essentially pass the ball in the last two minutes, last two quarters of the game. Uh, I'm really impressed to see it. He did a fantastic job on the tree. So I want to continue to see him put some more trust in Otter and Lutana, who obviously some of my favorite players in the world. Right. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I feel like a lot of the uh, the losses that especially the kind of previous LG comp had were uh, when uh, it was kind of like Overlord getting shut down. But now it feels like even if Overlord shut, got, got shut down, uh, potentially there's just so many different members that could all together uh, make it work. But um, are there any other picks that you would like to see? I mean, since we're talking about Overlord, we'll just keep going that direction. That you'd like to see Overlord go to now that he's begun shifting so much from the, the pure hard carry, has to have a Comfayer Blissey on it, uh, and moving over to stuff like Trevin. Is there anything else you'd like to see from him? The ESP Lucario on Overlord is signature, so if they find a way to get him back on that, I would love to see it. Funny enough, he's up against OG, one of the original ESP Lucario mirror matches, going all the way back to Season 1 regionals, where we are right now. Um, so, But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see Overlord play some more defenders, put some more trust in Lutano and Otter. Lutano is looking really clean on that Mimikyu. I think yeah. she's going to need to find an answer if they want to win this set. Yeah, it feels like they had the traditional answer, right, of the double defender, but that didn't even work. So I guess we'll be going back to the drawing board again. But thank you so much, Ender, for joining us. I know we'll be talking to you a whole lot today. Uh, so thank you so you much. We call the base. We're the only Pokemon that does that true damage that can defend these gold zones. They can most likely give up one. It'll be Black scoring that 49 points. Joey not able to stop that score. Tries to grab a Phantom forcing Koopa. It's not going to take them. But LG still leading in points. 328 to 249. Jeez, Last chance to score is here on the oh. bottom side. Black having no points in pocket. Egg Noob. Egg Noob is going to score 80 points in. If you've done the math, if you're following along at home, this could potentially be G stealing this series. I gotta wait until the final scoreline. I honestly don't. I think this is it. I really do think G pulled ahead with that final score. And oh my goodness, one point difference. The teleport in in the final moment for one singular point. And that is the literal the only point that matters. One thing I want to hear from, yes. I got to hear from Ender. Let's bring him up here for an interview because that was a really exciting match and something very, very different. What's up, Ender? What do you think about that very cool combination? Yeah, Sweet Kiss Comfy is one of the hidden gems in Pokemon Unite that doesn't get used a whole lot in competitive. What I really want to draw attention to that game with the Comfy is their held item build. They were Buddy Barrier, obviously EXP Share, and Rescue Hood. You don't normally see that rescue item, and when people think Sweet Kiss, you're thinking, oh, there's no recovery. But Comfy provides some sustainability with those shields, which Rescue Hood bu can buff up, Buddy Barrier, that was a huge Buddy Barrier on in the Mimikyu in that end fight. And all it takes, you know, one kiss is all it takes, and Rayquaza definitely being a paid actor joining in the fray there a little bit as well. I don't know if we'll see it again, but it looked really good that game. 
Yeah, I have to wonder, after you see something like that, uh, to me it feels like you kind of can't play it again. You have to throw out another strategy right here. Your, your enemies are spending all match reacting to it, and now maybe they have a plan to actually combat it. Interestingly enough, as Dupes next called out, we saw that moment where Umbreon was not able to steal those shields away. That could have been a big difference maker. What do you think also could have changed the way that final fight went? I really like how Freak actually started the fight with their Unite move. One of the interesting mechanics around Umbreon and Mimikyu is Mimikyu's Unite move gets instantly broken when they lose their shield, and Umbreon's able to take away that shield, obviously, with Moonlight Prince. So I think Freak was trying to bait out that Umbreon to use her Unite just a little bit earlier. It gives their Crustle some ability to move around in the fights as well with that Rubble Rouser. That gets countered a lot too. So I like how Freak started that fight with her Unite move. To me, it looked a little bit odd. I know you guys were a little confused as well. I was like, what is Freak doing here? But it, it ended up paying off, and I, I like that combo a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ender. We will be back with you very, very soon to break down some more of this. We're going to head into the draft here for our next game. Bye, Ender. Bye, Ender. Bye. 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 Yeah, I mean, look at them tucking and hiding. They're getting ready for a massive ambush. My eyes on Ducky here. They're going to need to save somebody with that slow beam. You feel me? Obviously well aware that they're up. Here we go, right onto the Rayquaza. They're looking for the rip right now, and it is going down. Secure by Eldegoss. Wipes up the I mean, seven seconds, and it's gone. Yo, Fast and the Furious indeed. Exile, flippy, rippy on him. You feel me? Did you see that rock to him as soon as they trapped that, uh, that choke point, it was all systems go exile, not setting up an ambush. Well, yes, but it's on the big green snake. There's two unconventional ways to approach the game, spe specifically in NA, and they absolutely yank the rug out from under, you feel me? We're gonna be bringing in Ender again for their expertise over that last match. Ender, a pretty exciting game number one between a team as well known as Orange Juicers and kind of this unknown quantity of Paragon. What can you tell us about Paragon and what they just played? You guys mentioned it. I think this game essentially was lost for Orange Juicers in the draft phase. Mm -hmm. uh, Paragon set up this really cool trap where they removed Machizel's power picks in that top path. They guarded that Gyarados, they guarded the Blaze again. Then they picked the Trevenant and Blastoise for themselves. Oh. That leaves anything that Machizel wants to play left to get countered by this double defender composition. We didn't see a spin Blastoise. We saw Surf, we saw Horn Leech. The redirection that these defenders can provide really shuts down anything Machizel wants to do. Yeah. On top of it, having two defenders into Flareons and Teleon also makes the game really, really hard. Um, yeah. So yeah, wonderful draft by them. Yeah, it was really cool. Now, obviously, we've seen a lot from Orange Juicers. What would you like to see them change in draft for game number two to maybe protect Machizel a little bit more in the draft screen? I want to see them lock down some of these power picks a little bit earlier in the draft, whether it's a Trevenant or a Blastoise, just so they have something they can fall back on. If they don't need it in the top path, Zagrug obviously very proficient on any of the defenders. He can flex into those picks as well. But I think locking down a good solid pick in that top path early is going to be pivotal for them. Okay, awesome. Well, I can't wait to watch this draft for game number two. Thank you so much, Ender, for lending us your insight. It's really interesting to hear uh, from a player who's obviously as prolific and uh, successful as you, Ender. So thank you, thank you so much. Really interesting, but yeah, thank you. Oh, how am I missing these every time? I don't know. All right, Ender, anyways, I'll give you another <laughs> one. All right, we're going into game number two. You're running Inteleon Mute. You can't start this. You can't initiate the team fight, so Machizel can play this so patiently. And that's exactly what he's doing. We are going to see a lot of members of Paragon up top now. They are maybe going to be starting doing some damage to this Rayquaza, but uh, we know that Orange Juice is sitting there waiting for them. But Chisel is going to finally jump into the center area, uh, kind of approaching from the west. Uh, the Hydra Typhoon only going to land on one target. Definitely not the best that they could have gotten in this situation, but that's going to be the first KO from the Chisel, taking down Blastoise, and especially the combination between that and the Trevenant have just been melting these members of Paragon. Rayquaza not taking a whole lot of damage. The burn hasn't been able to continue. The beam is going to be landing multiple people, but another big KO, and that's three members of Paragon down now. Only two left. However, both of them can secure. So Orange Juice just needs to be careful not to give them the opportunity to get the steal. Yeah, their team fight is just so electric right now, though. Machizel is able to chase down Will, no problem at all. Now they're just going to try to shred this Rayquaza. Dragon Rush into the Mew, and we don't even have an option for Melon to take it out. That'll be a secure by the Blissey, this time with the best body check 
like you've ever seen before. <laughs> Wants the sisters to charge through and secure their equaza. And look at this. We're dancing. As far and For do sure. this well, especially against what is considered, like I said, maybe the best team in NA right now. And I think oh. we have a prompt that's going to come up on screen. And this one will be, who is the best bird in your night? Oh, my word. I will allow you to start first. Uh, I mean, I feel like I would be betraying my morals if I did not choose Cramorant. Okay, why? Uh, because... It's Cramorant. My favorite will be Blaziken by far. I think it's the best bird. It may be flightless, but the power that it has within it is just unbridled. We got one more person to ask. Of course, it's Ender. Ender, we got to ask, what is the best bird in Pokemon Unite? It's got to be Charizard. Um, yeah, it's good. He's it's just good one. the best bird. All he's right, got wings. He's a bird. He's got wings. Fly. He's a bird. Yeah, that's true. Any other big uh, awards go in Charizard's direction? Also a dragon. That's true. That one's actually more debatable than the bird thing. <laughs> okay, okay, so here's a question, then here's a question. So if Charizard is a bird by being flying type, is the Decidueye not a bird? I chose Blaziken as fire no, fighting so, type. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. All right. Birds are birds if they have wings. If they don't have wings, they're not birds. All right, sound a lot like Zug Chat. So we're going to send you away, Ender. Thank you so much because our game number three is ready. So thank you for your expert. <laughs> All right, we have Ender for, of course, an interview. I won't miss that one. Uh, to talk about this last game, Ender, uh, I know you were just watching game number one between G and Umbra Vulpium. Uh, G, looking fantastic. What is making this team so good on, like, what they've had almost a flawless run through the tournament? This team has a lot of players on it that excel really well when it comes to the last two minutes. Okay. You'll notice that Slash has really clever positioning, is always ready, whether he needs to block, body block some spears for his teammates or whatever it might be. And we also saw OG get to get back on Buzzwool. I know you guys talked a lot about those nerfs and they have impacted the Pokemon, but it doesn't mean it doesn't deserve a spot in the meta at all. Yeah. I think OG really showing that there is another top lane Pokemon when the Gyarados and Blaziken might not be looking so good, Buzzwool is still up there. Mm, all right, the, okay, if you had to choose, uh, rate your top three in order, top lane Pokemon, top path Pokemon. This is, this is a tough one, I'm putting you on the spot. No, no, it's a race. Uh, Trevenant, probably number one. Uh, okay. Gyarados, number two. Blastoise, number three. Okay. Uh, so maybe Buzz is in that top five to six. But there's four bands and nine other picks that go out. That's so true. the Pokemon pool goes deep. Yeah, that's a really good point. I like that top three. Defenders definitely having their spot within the top half. We see that quite a bit. Um, Umber Volpium will now have the chance to choose side. Um, but Ender, we're going to have to talk to you a little bit more because the draft is already ready. So thank you so much for your insight. We're going to be jumping into game two between G and Umber Volpium. Obviously G with a gigantic advantage. And we almost have the level 15 Gyarados. Just starting out as a poor little Magikarp with the promise of popping off one day and OG really making the lore happen here in our group stage. I like that. They're, they're kind of sitting there with the Gyarados. They're just chilling, waiting to see if there's a target to bounce on because without a doubt, the only way Umbra Volpium wins this is winning Rayquaza. I don't think there's any, even little, then. any other way. Yeah, even then, good chance they won't be able to. Uh, but they've got to find a great initiation. They've got to find a great slow beam. I think if there's any way they're going to do it, it's going to be a great slow beam, a really big Verdant Anger. Uh, they've got to find something huge. A nice little snipe shot to start things off, but the initiation is actually going to happen from Slash just running through. What was that? And Genuinely, what was that? Just separating the team. I mean, Umbreon just kind of walks through the enemy squad. It's going to score the back line. And, well, their score pace is obviously fantastic. Umbra Volpium going to take the runway they were given, though, and focus completely on this Rayquaza. It's brought down to about half HP, but now the Leaf Field is also back capping into the realm. Black's going to go for the KO and not for the Rayquaza secure. So it is going to go to Umbra Volpium, but it's only two members who earn the Ray Shields. And Charles is already gone. Dragon Breath immediately deletes the Rayquaza shield. That was ridiculous how fast you delete a slow bro Rayquaza shield. Yeah. That is disgusting. Oh, I mean, that, that is a level 15 Gyarados. Uh, and yeah, so many uh, very comfortable with where they were positioned in that matchup. And G is going to take down Umbra Vulpium 2-0 fashion and put themselves as the number one in that group. Yep. Let's have an interview. Let's bring on Ender. Yeah, I want to hear Ender's thoughts on kind of those final moments there between YT and Ignorance. What do you think about YT's decision to secure Rayquaza right there and kind of how it all played out? I think it was a good call. Uh, going to close out games when you have the superior secure 
I think is a better way to play the game. We've seen teams time and time again lose games off of that. Sometimes it's Pokemon Unite and you know, you're taking an 80, maybe 85% chance to win the game. You, you end up losing it. If I'm Team YT, I know it's hard for them, but try to recompose, stay calm. Guys, we were winning most of that game. We had it. Let's just run it back and uh, we'll, do the, we'll, we'll get it this time. It can be hard for Team YT to, to keep their composure. You might be the first person to have noticed this, Cinder. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I, I don't want to uh, pull too many punches here, but you are speaking from experience. You know, that was something TTV and UCS Season 2 specifically had. Uh, it, was, it was a hurdle that seemed so difficult for you all to overcome. And when you did it, um, it was on this biggest stage. Um, how do you keep your mental when it doesn't quite go your way to be able to find success in the next two games? You really need someone to step up on the team uh, to be able to do that. And that's where I think Pikadif comes as a really important piece to this team. I think he's the one glue to this squad that can hold it down, remind everyone that, look, we did a great job in this game. We had the end game. Chaotic was on A9, which is a really good pick that was mentioned for him before. And he was doing fine with the Pokemon. It looked great up until the end. I think Pika is the, the, the X factor here. Yeah, thank you very much, Ender. We'll be checking in with you soon here. We've got another game between Team YT and Ignorance coming right at you. Right now, for Team YT, their entire tournament rests on this. Their entire chance of heading to Worlds rests on this moment. They will be knocked out of the regional finals if they are not able to pick up a victory right here. We got 54 seconds left and 18 points separating these two. Somebody's going to have to make a money move right here. We're going to trap Soup Chef again. We're going to try and heal them up. X scissor through. Flame Sweep comes through. They hit three. This is the engagement they can be go for. Slow beam right on top of Talon Flame. They are gobbled up instantly. Ignorance looking to pivot. Cog top grass used for no value. Pikadip is in the backside, but they're raining in tons of damage. They're trying to build walls around Ignorance, but Ignorance seems to keep punching them through. Three players down for Team YouTube. Ignorance back into the mix. They're up slightly on the scoreboard. Sylveon's covering the goal path. Sylveon covering the goal. It looks like Eldegoss is in a lot of trouble. If it goes down right here and isn't able to stop Blissey, they're going to be way behind. 15 seconds left they need to make a play they can't get past Slowbro. no one from team yt is up they're not going to be able to stop it ignorance takes a huge win right here talon lands but it's not enough they're still behind team yt does not advance ignorance is going to be heading to the regional finals i think it was zoinks maybe uh, earlier today that it was like hey greeting's dope uh you know what else is dope interviews so let's bring on ender for one of those hey ender how you doing buddy what do you think of that very wild game <laughs> i am so disappointed back when uh, back when i was on this team with uh, zugrug whenever lutano and otter wanted to get down and do stuff like this we were always like no business is business we're here to play the game and they're having way too much fun right now yeah i mean you and Snacks could have been both get fun together and have no fun <laughs> At the same time, it looks like. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, I gotta say, I loved it. I loved seeing uh, Overlord on his classic Pokemon. I love seeing Flash Cannon Duraludon. Uh, is there a pick, like, if you were to sort of vibe out in a moment, Ender, what do you think you would bring out? Would it be the Azumarill? I feel like I see you vibe on this Pokemon a lot. I like Azumarill. Fun fact I actually played Mew in a UCS game at Worlds because we had a game that essentially didn't matter. Both teams were just, you know, kind of doing something similar. So I think my pick would be Mew. I, I love that Pokemon. Yeah, Mew is very fun. Is there anything you'd like to see these two teams bring out here in game two or game three, depending on how long we go? Uh, I've been trying this new build that I recommend everyone does if you get Spragles in your game. It's Sludge Bomb Gengar with the Dream Eater. Just absolutely able to spread around the poison. It's so good. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, especially if you're against that me, is... go ahead and use that one. That would be excellent. Uh, <laughs> if you're on Ender's team, he likes being protected by rock tombs, right? So if you're playing Crustle, just follow him around and make sure you're kind of holding them in place with those rock tombs. Keep him safe, everybody. Hashtag toxic. <laughs> Hashtag toxic. <laughs> Let's get toxic. Thank you very much, Ender. We're going to take a look at our next game here uh, between these two amazing squads. And I got to say, I, I love that first one, so I can't wait to see game two. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope S5 kind of gets a feeling of what's going on and they kind of start getting a little loosey with it too. Here in a moment. Yeah, and here we go, the level 15 on the Zorark heading towards that home goal zone. They're going to look to make a Zapdos out of this thing. As soon as that Regieleki hits that home goal zone, they have essentially unlocked the win condition from year one of Pokemon Unite. The goal zone is defenseless and the points can rain in. 
Well, they're looking for Overlord. They've trapped them in Engage. Can we get a Charizard Unite on them? They're going straight in. Zorak Unite back the other way, and they're looking at Q. Q is very low on HP. Comfy Unite popped, and now they're focusing on Lutano. Lutano's taking a ton of damage. Meanwhile, Inteleon just Otter just scoring 50, darting right back through. That Charizard is the Comfy Zoro combo. Crustle's the next one on the chopping block. Crustle is eyed down. Crustle is gone. Four players gone of S5. Can they make it a full five? Just Blissey. They did it. And I hate to say it's Fraggles, but uh, that was that was a beat down. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. That's about what that was going to look like right there. Uh, Luminosity no longer playing nice. Though. Yeah, a rollout Wiggly would be kind of cool. Rollout Wiggly would be a lot of fun. We're going to bring Ender back for an interview right now. Ender, that's about how that was going to go, right? Yeah, you put Overlord on Zorak with a Comfy on its head, and I wouldn't expect much different. Are there any Pokemon that you'd love to see here in Game 3? Do you think Luminosity is playing anymore, or are they done? I think we might see maybe some interesting builds on different Pokemon. I I want to see some unorthodox builds, maybe some Leech Life Buzzwall, maybe some Trick Hoopa, which got buffed, and I don't even think it's a bad moveset right now. Just don't get to see much of that. I, I want to see them mess around with those movesets. I'm curious, are there any move sets, any builds, any Pokemon, anything that you actually think is right there competitively, but maybe people are not playing it or they're just a, a little afraid to try it outside of just like some of these matches where they could be having fun. Something that's legit competitive that we're just sleeping on a bit. Well, that Trick Hoopa is definitely one that uh, I, I think has a lot of potential that we haven't seen a whole lot of. There's another one that NA has never really messed around with, but it's been hovering in other regions is Submission Machamp. The quarterback, if you will. Um, just having that instant ability to grab someone and set up for your team, almost like a mean look with the speed boost built in. I, I feel like it always seems like it's trolled, but it's right there in terms of being potentially viable. Yeah, that's a weird one, isn't it? it, it I know it recently got buffed, but every time I play it, I'm just mad. I'm mad at myself, I'm mad at my champ, I might be mad at my dad. Oops, nice. Uh, yeah, maybe if they gave my champ like two more arms. Just redesign the whole Pokemon. Uh, Ender, thoughts on Rollout Wiggly, and do you want to see it in this third game? I would love to see it in this third game. I do think one of these players needs a Protractor, though, just so they can line up the angles a little bit right. True. If they've got a Protractor in their back pocket, it's looking good. Yeah, I think that would be pretty important. You know, Ender, I'm not sure how many more times we're going to see you on broadcast here today. I'm curious if you have some thoughts about everything we've seen today and what's going to happen at NAIC. A lot of exciting things. I think the biggest uh, thing that happened today, Nihao going undefeated in their groups, amazing. G making a comeback, so they're going to be in the upper bracket. Um, I think that was a team a lot of people had ruled out there. They're, you know, if you want to see orange juicers are the leftovers from a bunch of teams, G is right there as well, right? Um, so that, seeing them upset Luminosity, I'm sure they felt really good about that, considering the history between those two players and teams. Uh, I want to see how some of these newly formed teams, or Nihao, Ignorant, some of these newer teams, how they do first time on stage. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Ender. We're going to look here at game number three. Another interview in the books as we get ready for S5 versus Luminosity. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs Ender, we'll up. see you tomorrow, I think. I think that was the last time. Ender, we love you. Last few moments here of this final game of our broadcast today. Group C in our regional finals, Luminosity S5. Obviously, the full support composition is ahead for now, but we have possible scores happening. Uh, one interesting thing is they don't have amazing rip on the side of Luminosity, and they might be put into a position to rip Ray with all of these supports. Well, they're going to try and catch Supa, who's about at half HP. They're putting a dead rip in. They're, <laughs> they're going for the rip skis. Meanwhile, the S5 is going straight for the scores. Venus are going to pivot back to the middle, but Luminosity is, I'm assuming, ripping Ray. And <laughs> Supa secured in the face of everybody. <laughs> It would have been cool if we just saw it, but we didn't, so that's all right, I, I got to agree. It would have been good to see that. Uh, but we did see some scores happen. S5 <laughs> scoring in this top path right here. 322, 640. Now the points are just being run up. S5 somehow able to take down the Exodia supporter composition. <laughs> they, oh, the Infinity Stones were gathered by Luminosity, but S5 managed to tear the gauntlet off. S5 taking it down. However, LG gonna be the second team from that group 
to go to NAIC. That's right. LG's heading to NAIC through the loser's bracket, by the way. They yep. were not able to make it through the winner's bracket. They're going to be one and done at NAIC, so they're going to need to play well when they hit the big stage.